The Rock is back in WWE. WWE stars are leaving for AEW. AEW stars are leaving for WWE. There are certain allegations going on. Ladies and gentlemen, the wrestling world right now is is, is quite fascinating. Okay? So, uh, we'll better get started because we have a lot of things to talk about for the first episode of The Villain Arc. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Elish Oos. If you've seen my previous video, you know that I have this brand new podcast. Well, not brand new, but it's brand new to this channel called The Villain Arc. We're starting fresh. We're getting back episode one. Okay. There are going to be some future episodes, okay, uh, with guests. But at least once a week, okay, there will be an episode dropping every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time where I'll be discussing the wildest news stories and rumors related to professional wrestling. Mainly WB, a bit of AEW as well, of course. Um, and just talking about what's going on in the wrestling world, where are the news rumors, whatever. And there will also be some special episodes from time to time where I have different guests related to the wrestling world that will be joining the show. So yeah, uh, I want to also remind you guys that this podcast is available on Spotify. Okay, there will be the link on the dis- in the description, sorry. And also, you can just go on Spotify and search Villainark, and you'll find the podcast pretty easily. Now, let's get started with the big news, okay? The one thing that everybody in the wrestling world is talking about, and that, of course, is The Rock. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, The Rock is back in WWE, and it's quite, it's, it's actually very crazy, you know? There had been these rumors recently that a former world champion would be appearing on the day one edition of Monday Night Raw. Just so you know, as I'm recording this, we're the day right after day one, okay? So we're Tuesday, January 2nd, and this podcast is going to be live tomorrow, Wednesday, January 3rd. And if you're following, you know it's at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So yeah, last night was WWE Raw day one, okay? Lots of great matches, lots of surprises, and the the biggest surprise of them all is The Rock returning. Okay, so as I said, there had been these rumors of a former world champion returning, and a lot of names had been thrown around. The one I was believing was Braun Strowman. Okay, it was a name that I had seen quite a couple of times, but of course, nothing confirmed. Those are rumors. Um, so I was quite shocked to see The Rock. Okay, I didn't actually see his return, but I just saw the news popping up, and I saw The Rock return to Monday Night Raw, and I was like, there is no way. So, quick context for those of you that didn't watch Raw. Um, They announced that uh, at that moment, the former world champion would be appearing, a little suspense, and then Jinder Mahal's music plays. Um, Then everybody's like, God damn, they played us. It's Jinder Mahal. We were hyped for nothing, blah, blah, blah. Jinder arrived, uh, started talking. He gave a great speech. Okay, I want to praise Jinder Mahal a little because, you know, he wasn't the one that everybody would be talking about he was the one that was going to get destroyed by the rock and he still did a great job i love this suit a great promo he took the bumps he did his job perfectly so he's probably not watching this but huge shout out to jinder mahal so yeah he returned he started talking blah 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 and then eventually we just hear the rocks his music then everybody turns to the entrance ramp and we finally see him the rock ladies and gentlemen dwayne johnson making his return to WWE. Of course, he had returned on the Smack, on, a, on an episode of SmackDown, sorry, uh, in October or November, if I'm not mistaken. And it was it, it was crazy just back then. It was even crazier last night, okay, because he returned, he started talking a lot, uh, eventually beat up Jinder Mahal. And then at the end, he, he said he was a little hungry. So he asked the crowd whether The Rock should be sitting at a bar or should the rock be sitting at the head of the table and for those of you that don't get the reference the head of the table of course is a famous line by roman reigns the current undisputed universal champion so it's a little tease that we might finally get to see the rock versus roman reigns going face to face um now Uh, I've seen other rumors, and apparently this match would be taking place at the Elimination Chamber in Australia this February, okay? Of course, nothing is confirmed, okay? Just quick disclaimer, uh, majority of things that you're going to hear in those podcasts are going to be rumors, okay? Are going to be things that I'm going to see 
on wrestling news websites, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever. I'm just sharing with you guys all the possibilities because I absolutely love rumors. I love speculating, trying to figure out whether it's true or not. So, yeah. Um, but there is that possibility of, you know, The Rock versus Roman Reigns at Elimination Chamber because, as you probably know it, the plan for WrestleMania would be Roman Reigns to defend his, you know, WWE Undisputed Universal Championship against Cody Rhodes, you know, the whole finish the story thing. Which I'm not against, but the thing is, The Rock versus Roman Reigns is a WrestleMania main event worthy match. It's a match that by itself can sell out 60,000 seats. You know, it's two of the biggest names in wrestling history. And just the link that they have in the same family, and Roman Reigns has always been about family, about providing, about the bloodline, etc. It's, it's a golden opportunity, you know. And I'm, I got nothing against the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, but it's not WrestleMania. Sorry, premium live event. But yeah, it's it, it's just not it. And with a match of such a high caliber, why would you waste it on an Elimination Chamber pay-per-view when it could literally be your WrestleMania main event? You know? But once again, nothing is confirmed. We don't know if it's actually going to happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay? Um... So yeah, The Rock came back, teased the little Rock versus Reigns match. Um, once again, we can speculate all we want, but we will have to wait to see what actually happens. Um, Roman Reigns is set to return on this Friday Night's SmackDown episode, okay, on January 5th. He's probably going to be responding to The Rock, making a comment or two. You know, it's it's still like the biggest news in the wrestling world right now. And we're going to have to see where they go from there. But yeah, The Rock is back, ladies and gentlemen. That was crazy. That was that was a big a big moment. And it's going to be... It's going to lead to very great things. Moving on to the next point. Um, do some of y'all remember Andrade? Okay. Uh, in WWE, who was known as Andrade Cien Almas. Then only known as Andrade. He went to AEW and got known as Andrade El Idolo. Well, there have been rumors that Andrade would be returning to the WWE, okay? There were even some rumors that's, that were saying that he would potentially return on last night's Raw Day 1 edition, okay? Of course, it didn't happen. But, you know, it's, uh, I've seen a lot of rumors, a lot of reports, and, you know, I'm not confirming anything because I don't know anything. I'm not a journalist. I don't work for WWE. But it's looking pretty good that we might actually get to see Andrade return to WWE. And this guy has a lot of potential, okay? First of all, he's he's had more time to get better. He's gotten a better status in AEW. Even though they didn't use him that much, he felt more important. And just like Cody Rhodes did, you know? He left WWE for AEW, got big. He never won a world championship, but he still get, got big. And when he returned to WWE, he was a main eventer. Now I'm not on. So I'm not saying Andrade will be a main eventer, but he has a, a lot of potential. You know, they could potentially send him against Santos Escobar. They could make a very, very good rivalry. Um, but you know, it depends whether they want to have him as a face or a heel. When he returns, he'll probably be a face. So facing Santos Escobar or maybe facing Dominic Mysterio, which would be very interesting. You know, it could be great. You could even send him against Gunther, you know, fighting for the Intercontinental Championship. There is also something that could happen there. But there are a lot of matchups that could happen for Andrade if he returns to the WWE. And personally, I've always been a big fan of Andrade, you know. Uh, he's got a lot of charisma. He looks good. He, I like his style in the ring. I've always loved the Mexican uh, wrestling culture, you know, the Lucha Libre. Uh, and yeah, it's just, you know... There's a lot of potential there once again, but it's the same thing for The Rock. We'll have to wait and see, unfortunately. Um, the next point, once again, a potential return would be Mercedes Monet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are not familiar with the name of Mercedes Monet, she was formerly known in the WWE as Sasha Banks. She left the WWE in 2022, uh, the big backstage thing on Raw with Naomi. They were the women's tag team champions. They got mad because their match got changed. And they just left mid-show. It led to both of their releases. And then Mercedes Monet left. 
and went to New Japan Pro Wrestling, where she won the Women's Championship. I don't know if that has a different name. I'm sorry I don't follow New Japan Pro Wrestling that much. But yeah, it was a brand new start for Mercedes Monet, um, formerly known as Sasha Banks. And she did very good. She became a big star. And there had been rumors of her potentially returning to WWE. And apparently she had been in talks with WWE for a potential return, but apparently both parties didn't conclude anything and didn't come to an agreement. So now the rumors are saying that she's been in talks with AEW. And it's looking more likely that if Mercedes Monet returns, you know, to professional wrestling, it would be most likely to AEW and not WWE. Once again, those are rumors, okay? It's very possible she returns uh, to the WWE. Maybe she'll be the number 30 entrant in the Women's Royal Rumble. Once again, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, and it, it's caused a lot of trouble online because some people are really not big fans of Mercedes Monet and some other love her, you know, with all of their heart. So there's a big debate online, so you might see it if you go on X, okay? I've said it, I've called it Twitter a couple of times, but, you know, X, Twitter, you know what I mean. There has been a lot of debates on that, so if you, you come across those things, now you'll understand a bit more why. Um, now, it's not the happiest of subjects, okay? But I think the news dropped Friday, or Saturday, Friday or Saturday, of allegations sent against Chris Jericho. Now, I don't want to talk about this subject too much, okay? If you want, you can go online and check all the news and stuff. I'm not even informed that much myself. I don't like these kind of these kinds of subject subjects, um, not because I don't like believe in it or whatever, just because, you know, it's not the happiest of subjects and you never know who to believe in these stories. And I'm not saying that one of them is lying or whatever. It's just, you know, it's very tough to take a side, and then problem is also people are very quick to take a side, so it creates wars for things that are very personal between the two parties, you know, between the person that made the allegations and the person that he's been accused. It, it should be settled between them, but then it gets large, and people trying to get involved in it as they shouldn't, you know. So, yeah, I'm just mentioning it, mentioning it, sorry, but you can go check online, okay, just search Chris Jericho allegations, and you'll see it. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but at least you know a bit about it and you'll be able to be informed if you've not heard about it yet. Now, Saturday night or Sunday night, no, Saturday night, I think, um, it was the AEW pay-per-view or premium live event or whatever, uh, World's End, okay? A lot of big things happened during this show. Uh, I'm not going to cover it all because once again, I'm more talking about WWE instead of AEW. But from what I've seen, this show was very good. I didn't watch it live, but I saw a lot of reports, etc. And it's fair to say that AW are producing very good shows, okay? And I'm not the type of guy to just choose between WWE and AW. Of course, if I had to choose, I would choose WWE because I've been watching it for so long and, you know, it's what I love. But I can still appreciate AW and the amazing things that they've brought us, okay? I've seen like five minutes of the show and I loved it, you know. A um, couple of things happened. One, the the main thing was the main event uh, where MJF defended his AEW World Championship against Samoa Joe. And now there had been a lot of rumors of who the, I think it it's the devil. I don't even know the exact name, but there was someone wearing like a devil mask that would be tormenting MJF and just causing trouble all around AEW. And people wanted to know who that masked uh, demon was, you know? And so the match happens, MJF versus Samoa Joe, blah, blah, blah. And then the masked man appears. Uh, no, not the mask. I'm very sorry. Uh, Adam Cole was there to support his best friend, okay, MJF. Uh, one thing led to another, and MJF eventually lost the AEW World Championship, so Samoa Joe is the brand new AEW World Champion, which is very interesting. I, I think he deserves it. He's done a great job in AEW. He had done a great job in WWE and in NXT as well. So he deserves to be the top guy in the business at least once, you know? And then 
Adam Cole, you know, supported MJF. Um, then four guys wearing black masks came in the ring. Then the lights shut down. They opened back up. And MJF was face-to-face -face with Adam Cole and the four guys. Okay, MJF, uh, MJF was, like, down in the ring. And Adam Cole was sitting on his steel chair facing him. So it was the big reveal that the masked man for all that time had been Adam Cole. And that that is wild. That is very wild. The reveal was absolutely crazy. Okay, this is some pure storytelling and I love it. And, you know, this means that there would potentially be a an Adam Cole versus MJF. You know, big rivalry, big match along the line. But the thing is that recently we've also heard, okay, this is another piece of news, but it's related to it, so I'm talking about it right now. MJF is apparently no longer on the roster list of AEW, okay? When you go on the AEW website and you can check the roster, you know, all the wrestlers that are in AEW, MJF's name is not, MJF's name is not there anymore, sorry. So, what's going on there, you know? It's probably, once again, just a play, but from what I've heard, MJF's contract is probably up very soon. So either, once again, they're playing us and he's going to resign and so on, so on. Or it's actually the end and it'll be a to be continued, okay? I don't know too much about that. I'll probably be talking about it uh, in the next podcast when we get more information about that. But yeah, so Samoa Joe is the brand new AEW World Champion. Adam Cole is the masked devil. And MJF is apparently no longer in the AEW roster. That is big. Okay, it's very big, and it's 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 great to see. Um, what would be next? Um, there are, are apparently rumors. Okay, and I just saw those right before recording. Okay, I don't have too much information on that, but there are rumors that Naomi would be returning to WWE soon. Okay, we don't get any dates, of course. But Naomi, the same story as Sasha Banks, she left. Um, she left not too long ago. Well, a year and a half ago, approximately. The same story with the Women's Tag Team Championship, blah, blah, blah. And she could be returning to WWE, you know, eventually, okay? This doesn't mean that she'll be that she'll be there on this week's SmackDown. But, you know, she probably has a lot of unfinished business. And, you know, her whole family has made names for themselves. Well, her family, the family of her husband, being Jimmy Uso, have made their names in the WWE. So she's probably going to return there before the end of her career. But it could be good to see her get back. Okay, She was she was very, very entertaining to see. They just struggled to place her on the card and find her a great character. But I'm actually all for a Naomi return. Are you guys? If you're watching on YouTube, tell me in the comments. Um, next up. Uh, on last night's day one edition of Monday Night Raw, we saw the return of the awesome truth. Okay. The Awesome Truth, if you don't know, is a tag team that dates from a long time ago between The Miz and R-Truth, okay? They were very, like, popular, you know, they weren't getting cheered, but they were very popular back in the day because they would just, you know, it would just be pure chaos with them. They didn't care what they did. And they're also a very entertaining duo, okay? The Miz is probably one of the greatest wrestlers on the mic ever, okay? He's done some incredible promos, and he knows how to handle the mic. And our truth is undeniably the funniest wrestler you know we've ever seen. Okay, don't even argue with me. So seeing them get back together, oh my goodness, this is going to be entertaining, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, sit down, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. I'm very glad to see them be together. Okay. WWE have been struggling to place both of them on the card recently, but together they, they could even eventually win the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. They could have some great matches, some great rivalries. They can be very, very entertaining. So once again, we'll have to wait to see where the future leads them, What are who are their future opponents. For now, they're feuding with the Judgment Day. You know, if you've seen recently, there's been the whole thing with R-Truth wanting to join the Judgment Day. Um, didn't necessarily go as planned. And yeah, on last night's Raw, um, the, we we saw the reunion of of The Miz and R-Truth, a.k.a. The Awesome Truth, T 
to take on the Judgment Day. And I'm very happy about that, honestly, because I just love both of them. They're going to be so entertaining, and it's cool to find a new thing for them to do instead of the Miz just being the guy that pushes every brand new star that joins the roster and our truth doing nothing but backstage segments, you know. So it's, it's, it's nice. I'm very happy, and I'll surely be talking about them a lot more in the next few weeks because I just love them, you know. Um, next up. Giovanni Vinci, okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you saw Monday Night Raw Day 1 last night, and if you've been on any social media today, you've probably seen that Giovanni Vinci was hurt during his match last night, okay, quick context, there was a tag team match between Imperium, so Giovanni Vinci and uh, Ludwig Kaiser, taking on the team of Kofi Kingston and Jey Uso, okay, if you don't know, um, just dropping the info for those of you that might not be aware. Xavier Woods is out with an injury. So Kofi Kingston is all on his own. So he teamed up with Jey Uso to take on Imperium. So there is a tag team match. They're fighting and all. And then eventually uh, Vinci gets on the rope. Jumps in the ring. And as he's coming towards Kofi Kingston. Kofi hits him with the drop kick. Um, I don't know exactly what went wrong. But Vinci hit the floor and his head bounced and people were, you know, people thought he had a concussion. Okay. Uh, I, I've looked everywhere, but there is nowhere that it confirms whether he, he has a concussion or not. It looked like it, but he took to Twitter today to say that he was fine and huge thanks to everybody. Okay. But there is no confirmation on whether or not he had a concussion. I will assume that not because, you know, he said that he's fine and blah, blah, blah. But after this incident happened, the match was immediately stopped and Vinci was taken by the medical staff uh, to the back to be examined and all. So, you know, bit a bit of a, a little fright, but everything seems to be okay. Uh, Vinci seems to be okay as well. Um, and yeah, everybody just got scared, you know, and they stopped the match very quickly after that. But apparently all is well, so if you were wondering how Giovanni Vinci is doing, he's looking to be fine. Maybe he's not going to compete, uh, you know, right now. But, you know, if if nothing is serious, he should be back in the ring within the next few weeks. Um, next point, okay. Uh, Elias, okay. For those of you that don't remember Elias, okay, the guy that was in WWE with the guitar, Walk With Elias, he also became his younger brother, Ezekiel, you know. Um, Elias was fired in September of 2023 by WWE. He was released from his contract alongside a lot of other wrestlers, including Dolph Ziggler, which I'm still pissed about, but it's okay. So, yeah, Elias was released by WWE, and people had been wondering what he would do, where he would go, you know. A lot of people thought he would be a great fit for AEW, but we had no news on him. I'm sorry. And now recently, uh, Elias took to Twitter to post a video, a a bit of a a little you know a little scene, where he buried his own character Elias, and announced that he was returning to wrestling as Elijah. Okay, this guy has a problem with names that are too similar, but it's okay. So yeah. Elias, from now on, I'll call him Elijah. Elijah is back to wrestling. Now, there are no confirmations on where he's going, uh, if he's returning now or in a couple of months, if he's coming back to WWE, which, by the way, he's probably not coming back to WWE. But yeah, Elijah is apparently back to wrestling. The rumors are pointing towards AEW. He could be a great fit there. There are a lot of people he could be feuding with. And... I think it's a place that fits him more than the than the WWE. So I'm very glad to hear that, and I'm glad he he gets to you know bounce back after after being released from his contract. Okay, this is a very good news. And now final news. Okay, this episode is not too long. I thought it would be way longer, but it's not too bad. Final point. Um, once again, rumors. Okay, this show is going to be a lot about rumors. You gotta expect it. AJ Lee is potentially returning to wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. And if she returns, it'll be WWE. Okay, I'm saying this right now. 
but she recently posted a photo of her wearing her old wrestling boots, okay, that she wore back in 2014, 15, uh, etc. And yeah, uh, people have been going wild about it, and there had also been rumors prior to that that AJ Lee would potentially be returning to WWE. It's more likely now because her husband, aka CM Punk, is back in the WWE as well, and there are a lot of potential, you know, storylines they could do with her. You know, the main idea for a return, okay, that I've seen in a lot of places is that at WrestleMania it would probably be Seth Rollins versus CM Punk for the World Heavyweight Championship. But at the Elimination Chamber, the match would potentially be a mixed tag team match where Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch would be taking on AJ Lee and CM Punk. And that is that is still something, okay? Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch are two of the most important superstars in today's WWE. And CM Punk and AJ Lee are some of the most popular superstars ever in the history of WWE in their respective divisions. So it's... If it happens, it's going to be very interesting to see. And then potentially at WrestleMania, we get to see AJ Lee take on Becky Lynch. Straight up, one-on-one match. It could be very interesting. And then, you know, if she returns, you know, and keeps on working, and it's not just a one-time or two-time thing for for the storyline, she has a lot of people she could be fighting, okay? AJ Lee versus Charlotte Flair? Yes, sir. AJ Lee versus Asuka? Yes, sir. AJ Lee versus Bianca Belair? Yes, sir. AJ Lee versus Jade Cargill? Yes, sir. AJ Lee versus Rhea Ripley? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, once again, I hate repeating myself, but we'll just have to wait and see, you know, what the future holds for her and her husband. But, you know, it would be wild. She's probably one of the most popular female wrestlers ever in the WWE. People have just always loved her. And the desire from the fans from an AJ Lee return is is incredible, you know? But yeah, would you like to see AJ Lee get back in the WWE? Who would you like her to feud with? Once again, if you're watching on YouTube, tell me all of this in the comments down below. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what is going to wrap it up for the first episode of the Villain Arc. I hope you enjoyed it, okay? If there are some things that you liked and or that you didn't like, please tell me in the comments. I always love some great criticism. Um, of course, constructive and, you know, just not, hey, this is bad. This is not going to help me at all. I'm just going to delete your comment and get on with my day. But if you have any, you know, comments for me, thoughts, opinions, or ideas, feel free to leave them in the, in the comments. So, yeah, I'll be reading all of them. Um, so, yeah. This is it for the first episode. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. This means a lot, and you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Um, once again, this podcast is also available on Spotify. The link is in the description. You can also just search up Villain Arc in Spotify. And yeah, make sure you're there next Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, for the second episode of the Villain Arc. And with all that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.